Dupree. And I'm going to be on Howard later this morning. I just thought I'd warn you. Da, 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 You're listening to The Howard Stern Show. Godfrey will be in in a minute. Uh, um, you all right, Doug? We betting on this final question here? or Is that the final it's one? It's not the final one, but... Oh, you're just going to stop it. Call this Maybe not. This leakage out of, out of your wallet to a halt? Yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm doing so terrible. <laughs> what was the question again? I forget. Who remembers? This wasn't the Oscar question. No, it wasn't the that. cannibal question, was yeah, it? Yeah, the, the cannibal question. question. What do you call people who eat other people? We all thought he wouldn't know. I'm just down 140 bucks all of a sudden. <laughs> it's upsetting me. You see how it happens? Yeah. Gets All of a sudden, it gets crazy. <laughs> uh, I don't think he'll know the answer to this. Does anybody want to bet me that he does? You know, there's, with this guy, there's all every chance that he might know. John, you think he'll know? What was the question? <laughs> what do you call people who eat other people? No. He won't know, right? Okay, let's just There's get this no other right. answer besides cannibal. No, no, he said it has to be cannibal. I'll bet you 20. What is the other answer, Bob? All right, I'll go 20 with you. All right. All right, here we go. Oh, wait, I'm, I'm saying he knows. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. Cannibal. Oh! <laughs> Oh, you're 100 bucks. I cannot win today. There's no way. I, he's help. trying to give me a, a break. Uh, it I really can't. was. I, I know. <laughs> and you're just giving him that. I know. I give up. That's it? Yeah. Go try another question. Oh, but, oh, I'll, oh. I'll try another one. <laughs> Gilbert, want to come in and play? Oh, he's too cheap. Yes. Yeah, Gilbert's so cheap, he'll yeah, never let's play. not half a minute. It's very confusing already. <laughs> Gilbert's a weird guy. He's got more money than anybody, but he won't pay for a dinner. How do you think he's worth? how much money he's got? I, would I, say think Gilbert, no, I, I think Gilbert's worth close to a million dollars. Oh, he's oh, more than that. Much, today. much more than that. Huh? Hey, Howard, he's two million. And like, he won't even buy a new shirt. <laughs> <laughs> let's let's yeah, bet on how much money Gilbert's got on him. <laughs> hey, yeah. Uh, Gilbert, do you have money in your pockets? Oh, don't say how much. All right. I say he... Less, less than, than 20? 20. I, I say 20. <laughs> Can I give you my theory, Howard? Go ahead. Okay, because I've cause I yes. seen Gilbert around for a while. He's with the guy from Caroline's, right? Right. Which means that that guy probably either drove or paid for a cab. Right. He knows that he can get free food here. Right. So yeah, he, no, he's already hoarded a bunch of water. And, and, he have, yeah. and he doesn't have to get himself home. Right. And so with that knowledge, I'm going to say Gilbert's got between five and seven bucks in his pocket. No. Really? I say Gilbert's got thirty dollars. Oh, I'll say ten dollars. Yeah. I'd say twenty. Forty. I say less than twenty. All right, Gilbert, can you please empty your pockets? Oh, okay. right. <laughs> <laughs> so cheap. Probably like he knows he has to be well, out he today. He doesn't even have a wallet. Look at no. the boss complain. Yeah. Let me see. Let me see. Does it include change? Everything. Yeah. Everything. Oh, boy. Oh, oh wait, he's got a he's got a wad oh, no. there. Yeah, they got to be singles. Oh, we forgot about hookers. <laughs> look, at, look at he's hiding. Oh no, he's hiding everything else in his pockets. I know. Like secret stuff. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> he's got he's got a whole his, secret his life. Whole, his oh, whole routine. And God forbid he should reveal something real about yeah, himself. You're not gonna take off your shoe and take out money, are you? <laughs> <laughs> he's like, he's oh, okay. Socks. All right, how much you got? Okay, you ready? I say you have thirty. Okay, quarters. Uh, let's see. That's a dollar. All right. Never bought lunch for a person when in his life. When it's time to chip in, he pulls out the roll of singles. Two dollars. Two. All right. That's two. No, two and, and a quarter. What about the bills? All right, we yeah, a lot of singles. Getting to that next. A big wad. Okay. Like an old Jew. <laughs> <laughs> you never use a wallet. No. No driver's license no. or credit cards. No. Nothing. So if you too get hit, do you have a, bus, a credit card? Uh, yes. You do, but yes. you don't carry it. No. He That's doesn't smart. have a yes. bank card with him. No, yes. he, no, he does have a credit card in his yeah. pocket. Yeah, yeah there's something in there. I don't know what it is, though. Yes. Right, it's 20. Okay, 20. Probably a Discover card. 30. 30. Oh. 35. 35. One of each. 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42. It is mostly yeah. words. Yeah. <laughs> and 43, 44, 45. All right, $45. Uh, 45. Yes. 47, 47 and a quarter. And a quarter. Yeah. It's not a lot of money for a guy to be carrying around all day. <laughs> well, Especially in New York. That's more than I thought he'd have. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. How do you get your cash? Like, do you go to a cash or you have an accountant deliver cash to you every week? Ah. Uh, because he's single and I know he yeah. can't do a thing for himself. Yeah, exactly. What do you do? So How do you get the money? money? Just out of the bank. Oh, you go to a bank? Yeah. yeah. And you go down and you have a bank book and they take the money out? Yeah. 
Oh, okay. Yeah. You don't I'm surprised. Use, no, you don't use a, cra- a bank card? You go to the bank yourself? It's just a maze that I could brush my teeth. Yeah. Yeah. Well, when he, was dying, <laughs> he was in his apartment dying, literally dying. Yeah. His appendix burst and everything. He didn't know how to call anybody yeah, to help he him. Li- he, oh, oh, oh meanwhile. Yeah. Died. Yeah. Yeah. I have this article. Right. This was in the Post. Go ahead. On May 29th. It was this whole thing after Phil Hartman got shot. Go ahead. The curse of Saturday Night Live. <laughs> uh, <laughs> meanwhile, what kind of... Gilbert was mentioned as part of the curse. Yes. Yeah, oh, yeah and everyone yes. said... Yeah, yeah, and everyone said... He was in Saturday Night Live? Yeah, that's yeah, right. <laughs> and the point is that uh, there is no curse because they ran out of people. They said, okay, Belushi. Yeah. Killed a Radner. Now, this, is, this is cast of hundreds of people yeah, in that over the years. Yeah, so they three, got people. three people out of hundreds. Right. Yeah. Chris Farley, Phil Hartman, Gilda Radner, and John Belushi. And then it said, and Gilbert Gottfried's appendix burst. Yeah. Almost died. Yeah, almost Sprinchy died. Richie comic Gilbert Gottfried hovered near death <laughs> for nearly a week at NYU Medical Center in 92 after a problem with his appendix. So Would you, you ever escape the curse? <laughs> yes. Would you ever bet... Uh, money on a game like we play this homeless game. Would you ever bet? You I'll bet have... a lot because I won't pay anyway. Right. So <laughs> I'll just bet. I'll bet five million. And you don't even count. care if we kick your ass for the money. You won't pay. <laughs> Break his <laughs> leg. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. You, know, you know what I think was on Saturday Night Live with Gilbert that really is cursed. Was were you on the Robert Downey Jr. cast? Uh, no, I think that was two seasons later. Who was your cast? Okay, that was Anthony uh, Michael Hall. Okay, well Eddie Murphy. Oh, he oh, was and Joe yeah. Piscopo. Right. Joe Piscopo. Oh, that's the year. You were in the year they fired everyone except for Eddie Murphy and Joe Piscopo. Yes, yeah. right, right, yes. Right. right. You got wiped out. <laughs> 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 yeah. Imagine they fired you and not Joe Piscopo. I, that's an amazing thing. Whatever. That's it. And Gilbert found out he was fired by a fan letter. Is that true? Yes. I walked in and they had this place where there's fan letters, <laughs> <laughs> and, and I opened one up and it says, "Dear Gilbert, I'm so sorry about what happened to you." And you had no one had told you. No one, no one told you. And you were at thing. work. You were there reading yeah. the mail. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> then later on, I get called into the producer, the right. new producer, like Dick Eversole. Yeah. And it's like, uh, well, I have something to tell you, and I said, I know already. <laughs> I read my fan mail. Yeah. Oh wow. Well, it's like going to Auschwitz. You never really know what's going to happen to you. You know, here's a funny thing. Here is Gilbert uh, as the voice of a cartoon character. You are what? What voice is this from? Aladdin. Aladdin. Yeah. He plays a parrot. Movie. Yeah. And in fact, uh, they wanted Gilbert for this. They even drew the parrot to look like him, even before they gave him the part, because they really? only had they Gilbert were in mind. Planning on him. And here's a little bit of Gilbert. I have a point to make here. Right, there's okay. two. There's, this is my point about how there's two different Gilberts: All right. the on-air persona and the off-air persona, and they're both scary. All right. All right here you go. Here's Gilbert as the parrot. <laughs> I can't believe it. I just don't believe it. We're never going to get a hold of that stupid lamp. Just forget it. Look at this. Look at this. I'm so ticked off that I'm molting. Patience, Thiago. Patience. The theme was obviously less than worthy. Oh, there's a big surprise. Have you ever watched these cartoons? Oh, yes. Yeah, okay. Yes. Now, what do you say? Well, you should see him. He's, you know how when celebrities watch their yes. work on the Tonight Show? You should see Gilbert very serious during oh, his club. not making a sound. I, I, no. I like when they start crying he during their own He everything thing. out. <laughs> yeah. right. That he sat and listened to. Now listen to, in contrast, this is off-the-air Gilbert. Oh. This is Gilbert calling Gary from years ago on the answering machine. Yes. Okay. And this is Gilbert's real voice. Okay. All right. It's just as scary. Yes. All right, but it's like a whole different guy. Oh, All right, here it is. Yeah, Gary, it's Gilbert. Okay. I'll probably be there tomorrow, but um, if you could call us, uh, call me up and just tell me what exactly is going on tomorrow. You know, what's, you know, who's going to be there and everything like that. Um, that's the scariest Gilbert. Yeah. Wow. People are afraid that's of the serial killer. Yeah, killer. yeah that's serial yeah. killer Gilbert. Yeah, I mean, really, listen, that's listen like to Bruce it. Stern. Uh, um, Hello, Gary. And if worst <laughs> comes to worst, if I could uh, just call in. And, uh, okay, I'll talk to you whenever. Okay. Uh, yeah, b- 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 bye-bye. Okay. Gilbert Manson. That, that really sounds like he was a very quiet man. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, <laughs> 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 that's, the, that's the one he's hiding from everybody. Yeah. Yeah. But meanwhile, it's it's funnier even than the, the, the Gilbert Absolutely. voice. <laughs> it's scary. Somebody ought to cast that. <laughs> that's the Gilbert when he's dying in the hospital. Oh, uh, Howard, could you oh, bring me worst some summer. pajamas yes. with an elastic waistband? <laughs> All Gilbert did. I, and notice I haven't heard from Gilbert off the air since. Yeah. Only when he was dying. Gilbert did the whole time he thought he was dying <laughs> yeah. was tell you how much he was dying. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and how he didn't want to die. Although I oh, sounded I've got all these. Things. I once heard a tape of myself. How about the Gilbert who turned to me and went, Howard, uh, 
I think I'm going to get out of show business. What, is, yeah. what am I doing? What am I doing with my life? What What's it all about? And then, like, he got better, and he was like, oh, I guess I got to stay yeah. in. Yeah. That what was. was he that's do? what scared me the most when you were like examining your life. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and I realized there wasn't any. And I said, I go up to yes. Gilbert. Stupid. You yes. just had an appendix attack. Mellow you know out. He's a perfect example of. Yeah. We started off the morning talking about people in show business who were asked what they would do if they weren't in show business. Yeah. Gilbert must have had visions that he could do something. Yeah, and you know what he realized? It was either a caddy or a short order cook. <laughs> yes. And he stayed in show business. Although I realized when I was in the hospital on one tape, I heard of myself, and I, yeah. it was actually sounded like Groucho Marx, like when he was like. Toward the end? Yeah, toward the old, you were, oh, you were like an old man. Absolutely. Yeah, it was like Groucho Marx when he used to go on Dick Cavett. You, you know? scared me. I mean, it was, when, you st when you sat me down, and I forget who I was with, I think I was with Dominic Barber or something. I like. used to work with Chico <laughs> yeah. in the Glasgow Theater, and we worked with Margaret Dumont. Who was a beautiful actress. Right. And we worked there, W.C. Fields. Yeah, the terribly <laughs> boring <laughs> Groucho. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Gilbert talked very slowly. Yeah. You know, the Groucho now is going to reflect on his stupid <laughs> career. Yes. <laughs> Harpo was named Harpo because he played the harp, and few people know that. You know, it's like, <laughs> it's so scary when you see these guys on TV, yeah. and it's toward the end, and they have no idea they're not funny anymore, yeah. and everybody's hanging on their every word, hoping they'll say something funny. They call me Grouch Show because they said that I had a grouchy attitude. <laughs> Why wasn't Gilbert on Comic Relief? Yeah, think of Gilbert, why were you not asked to be on uh, Comic Relief? I have no career. <laughs> <laughs> Is that it? Not alive or dead. I see you're going to be at Caroline's Comedy Club tonight for one show at 8 p.m. That's very rare for you. Yes. You very rarely do uh, <laughs> appearances. Very week. Yeah, you must need money. He's down to $43. I guess so. All right, one last homeless question. We'll see if Gilbert will bet. All right. Yes. All right, here we go. Maybe you can make some money off him. We ask homeless people questions yes. and we bet on their answers. Okay. It's a cruel game okay. of arrogant people. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> I guess they didn't ask Gilbert to be on comic relief. They figured they already had too many parrots. <laughs> All right, here we go. Yes. What does the word homophobic mean? Well, this homeless man, homeless man, homeless, man. homeless man. It's Yiddish. Yeah. yeah. Well, he know. Welcome to the Yiddish. These now. aren't the kind of Shavara questions. Play a rabbi parrot? Because <laughs> you're so good at it. Are those real uh, Jewish words that you're singing there? Or are they just, them they are. You are. Are you a religious Jew? Yes, I'm a very religious Jew. He Jew just came from Tim. I have a little song I wrote. About you know, we're on all over the country. A lot of people don't get to hear Jewish songs. Some people have never heard. Them. Well, Would this you, is their lucky well, let, day. Them, let them hear some, please. So when you were a kid, your parents would force you to go to temple? Or did you, were you going to be a cantor? Were you bar mitzvah and everything? I was never bar mitzvah. No. no, I'm a bad Jew going right to hell. Yeah, you're, you're kidding. Your mother and father, did, you, you, did, what is it? I, I sense your father left your mother at a very young age. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. You have a mother, right? Your mother's alive. Yes. 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 But you have no father anymore? Your no. father died? No. The yeah, just disappeared. Clear. Just disappeared? Yeah, yeah. He's not it's, dead. You I'm don't know where he is. talk about it on the Jerry Springer show. No, is, uh, your, fa is your father dead? Uh, yes, deceased? Yes. Yeah. Was that sad for you or you didn't care? <laughs> I sense you didn't care. <laughs> your parents ma you were married the whole time and then yes. he died? Uh, yes. And that was I sad was for you? I was married the whole time. Did you go to the funeral? Uh, uh, no, no, I was booked that day. <laughs> you were oh, working at Caroline's? Oh, yeah, no, yeah. no, I wasn't. No, yeah. did you care about your father at all? Oh, yeah. No, no, because some people, some comedians have very painful childhood. Oh, I, yeah. I, I, oh, you get I those... predict that yours was really bad. No, you get those <laughs> comics who go on and go, well, you know, I never hugged my father. Right. I know you don't want to get into your personal life yes. because, after all, you're a very important man. Yes, I and, really uh, You have to maintain your air of mystery. <laughs> Is it true you didn't go to the funeral because the buffet was, uh, there was no free buffet? <laughs> 
So you went to your father's funeral, yes. right? Okay, all right. This was years ago? Yes. Years ago. Did he ever see, see your success? I did anything you Did he ever see your success, like your, your Up All Night show or your parrot impression? <laughs> did he ever get to know how He's successful? Never killed him. <laughs> did, he, did he ever? How many years ago was this? Oh, this was years ago. 20 years yes. ago? Oh, longer. Oh, longer. Yeah. So he never got to see you become something. Never got to see you. Right. And he probably thought you you were an yes. ambition and yes. would never be anything, right? And look at the surprise. Do you feel your father loved you? <laughs> <laughs> Did your parents like you as a person, do you think? Or were they repulsed by you? <laughs> I think we've hit a touchy area. This is like Barbara Walters. She can't even answer. That's how painful it is. No, I suspect you had a bad relationship with your father, right? Yeah. Right. No. Didn't your father think you were gay? We <laughs> do. Did your father live what long enough? To see, did your father live long enough to see you with a woman? Yes, <laughs> I haven't lived that long. Uh, yeah, no, don't don't kid yourself. Gilbert gets Gilbert plenty. Gets women, yeah. He yeah. gets plenty. Yeah. <laughs> what happened? Are we betting on the homeless game? I don't know. What was the question? I don't know. Gilbert started with uh, Yiddish song. Yeah. Yeah. Did your parents force you to go to temple? Did they How make did you, they like, not for a for him? No. I didn't even Cheap like him. Probably didn't want to throw a party. Oh, yeah. And Gilbert had no friends anyway. <laughs> Why did you not get bar mitzvah? You, you had Jewish parents. Yeah. Don't you think that's a little no, odd? No, they were both black. No, come yeah. on. Wasn't that a little odd? Yeah. Uh, no, just uh, didn't even go to temple all that much. Really? really? Yeah. And where did, you, where did you pick up this incredible impression of a cantor singing songs? Yeah. Well, I would say enough. Enough. And you would see that? And would you laugh at them when yes, they would do it? Because <laughs> it was funny. You couldn't believe a grown man was singing these songs. And you probably say to yourself, hey, if the guy had a good voice, why doesn't he sing in English? Yes. And right. then, then when they weren't singing, then the voice would take on this weird accent that right. wasn't Jewish. It wasn't It's like... When we sit here today <laughs> amongst our beloved relatives. That's like Dracula. Yes. <laughs> our friends and our acquaintances through life. Do you think they spoke that way because uh, by speaking slowly, they could think of the next thing to say? Yeah, exactly. Right. And then they would break into song. Yeah. And that would make you laugh. Yes. Yes. And so everyone, please be seated. <laughs> And as a, as a, Gilbert was some Orthodox Jew. Yeah, and as a, as a young man growing up, you would say to yourself, you know, these songs mean nothing to me. They didn't yeah, give you a yeah, religious exactly. feeling. You were saying, I'm supposed to feel like God is in the room, yeah. and yet you just wanted to get out of there, right? Yes. Yes, it scared you, in fact, those songs, didn't yes. they? And then there would be a little break where you'd go, now everyone stand. Right. And, and you have to stand while he sang. Yes. Right. Me <laughs> At least let you sit down while yes. you're listening to that. Yes. Then everyone be seated. And then you think, oh, good. He's busy. I'm sitting for the rest of it. Now stand again. It's like an aerobic exercise. <laughs> Here's Nassim. He claims he's a limo driver. He drove Gilbert and received no tip. Oh, well, that's that, that could be five million limo drivers. Nassim, is that really true? Yeah, that's true, Howard. And where did you drive I, Gilbert? Where did you drive Gilbert? I pick him up from those you know, low-income housing projects on our low, low east side. Right. And I always keep my windows and door closed. Yes. So I knew that I'm picking up Gilbert, so I was very excited. So when he came to me, I thought some homeless coming, you know. Yes. And, and, and he was telling me to load the window, and I said, no, no, not today, you know, next time. So then he says, I'm Gilbert. I'm sorry, you know, I so I, I just opened the door and take care of him. So how how many hours did you drive him? Oh, no, not really. From uh, Manhattan downtown to uh, New Jersey, he was doing some uh, uh, some comedy show. Why right. was he near the housing project? Yeah. That's where he lives. Yeah. Yeah, he lives in low income housing. Yeah, but the thing is, you know, that he looked like a real, uh, like, like uh, homeless, you know. Yes. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> You're not insulting him. <laughs> on, the, on the walk, uh, on the driving, you know, I was All right. Thank you, thank yeah. you. I don't think we're getting much that story. That's a pretty though. exciting story. Yeah, Ariella, you're there. On the air. Yeah, I think I'm, I think he's being disgusting. He's making a mockery out of his religion. Who, Gilbert? Yeah. You feel, exactly what he's doing. Are you Jewish? Yes. And you feel, Ariella, that Gilbert is making fun of the Jewish songs? Yes, and it actually happens to be a beautiful religion. Yes. 
And you feel that the song should not be ridiculed. Gilbert mocks well, it. I'll, I'll give you some music in the background. Go ahead. You're talking. What is that, ma'am? funny and cute, but it's... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I always thought... <laughs> well, you should... Funny and cute. <laughs> well, you know, ma'am, you should get an ability to laugh. The, the, the religion is incredibly funny. That song is incredibly stupid. <laughs> Actually, if you were listening to some of the well, songs... Well, if you heard the original version, it was... I mean, it was singing in English. I, I don't know why... I agree with Gilbert. I don't know why these guys sing in this secret language. Well, if it was in English, you'd really be bored. <laughs> yeah, imagine that. <laughs> and wonder what... And, and wonder what it all means, too. It's probably like, you know, oh, there's nothing going on. <laughs> Bunch of Jews sitting around. I'm a Jew, so I feel bad. Watch this. I'm going to get the Jews to stand up in just a minute and then oh, sit down. Oh, so now. stupid, I'll do what I say. <laughs> There's a sale at Bloomingdale's. They'll turn to page 85, even oh, though they can't read the prayer. <laughs> <laughs> Before you mock something, you should learn about it and learn the word. Why? <laughs> we don't learn about Please anything else. Please be seated. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. We're all a bunch of immature adults. And immature adults. How, how old are you, sweetie? All right, well, she's gone. She's very... Very hard to heal anyway. Here, anyway. Paul, you're on the air. Go ahead. Yeah. Get Godfrey off the air. Get him off. Sucks. It's no good. Yeah. Why is he making it? Make fun of Jews. That's all he's been doing. He does that every time you're on. <laughs> he's tired and bored. It's one of Paul, are you a Jew? No, I'm not. Then you don't even want to hear him make fun of Jews. No, he doesn't want to hear Jews. How many times has he been on? He's done the same thing. He's been on a million times, and every time he comes here, he makes fun of the Jews. You're right. Same song, same okay. thing. All you're right. On. Thank you. I thought it was a new song. <laughs> it sounded brand new to me, yes. too. I wrote that one. <laughs> Uh, one more call. Paul, there's another Paul. You're on the air. Hi, uh, Gilbert. Yes. I'd like to know uh, what you're going to say today to set back race relations another 50 years. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's already on the way. Well, I started with the Jews. i got to warm up. Absolutely. You're on the air. Go ahead, Harry. Yeah. Yes, what can I do for you quickly? Yeah, I want to uh, wonder why Gilbert's not in the death pool. you got a, a pending problem. All right, thank you. Oh, okay. That was that was James Brown calling in. <laughs> All right, Gilbert will be at Caroline's Comedy Club tonight. If he if there's anybody out there he hasn't turned off yet, <laughs> go see him for one show at 8 p.m. He's really funny. He also plays a dog in Doctor Doolittle. Oh yeah. Yes. Did you work Did with Betty Thomas? Uh, no, in? no, just on the phone. On the phone. Yeah. You yeah. called it in. Yeah. She, yeah. She's very committed to her work. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. You what called you in your performance. Yeah. I just walked in. They said, "All right." A lot of here. times when you do a movie and you're doing a voiceover, he's just the voice of oh, a dog. Oh, so he was here. Yeah. They he was here. I'm there. Yeah. Betty's on the phone and she tells you what to do. Okay. Yeah. Just like there for two minutes, and they said, "Yeah, all right, that sounds." Good. Now, what do you play? Uh, dog. And does it sound different from the parrot? No. Oh, yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> the same stupid thing. Like, I think I'm going to have a heart attack and die from that surprise. That's what the dog must sound like. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Do you ever go into a different voice for any of these cartoons? Uh, yes. I. Re oh, I did on a uh, Superman cartoon recently. I did my Lugosi. Oh, did you? Oh, really? Yeah. Did, now, what do you mean? You played Bella Lugosi or you just used that I voice? I just used that voice. And what was the character you played? Uh, well, I did Mick Chess Picklick in it. Right. Which is my regular... Uh, character. Yeah. yeah. And then it was Mick Chess Picklick, uh, like, boss or his high command. I see. So they wanted the Lugosi voice. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah, it was very touching. Very good. Did and you my Cosby doing... show will rerun next month. The Cosby show? Yes. You're one of the, the few. One. One. You're one of the few white performers that ever appeared on you Cosby. You get to do the Cosby Show, yeah. Don't you? yeah, they they love him over See, there. I work with every black performer. He's yeah. on every Murphy, black show. Murphy, Cosby, yeah. all of them. And uh, also, um, he's uh, used to have a TV show on uh, <laughs> Channel 17, the cable channel, but they Wait, canceled they fired it. Him. Yeah. yeah. Please, I'm still kind of uh, sensitive up. about it. I know, it was very hard on you. Yeah. It was like the end of the Seinfeld show yeah. or something. So trying to get over it. it. Uh, what is it, Sam? Yeah. Yeah. Why, uh, Gilbert, why, why don't you put your word together? It's not even Yiddish, it's not even Igbo, it's nothing, man. The what? Spend... <laughs> what are you saying, Sam? You're saying That's... Gilbert is singing nonsense? Right. It, 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 it's no. are you not a... a word, it's nothing what he saying. just... You are a Jew, no. sir? Yes, and I'm you... a Jew. And you find Gilbert offensive with his Jewish singing? No, I, I just think it's funny, but it's stupid because whatever he says, not such thing. You want a literal song? You'd you rather he had real words. <laughs> you feel Gilbert is making up the words to the Jewish songs? 
That's correct. I see. Okay, I'll do one that's... All right, do a real yeah. Jewish song. Doesn't even make a sense. <laughs> <laughs> All right. He wants you to maybe be a little more literal um, in your then, oh, comedy. I'm sorry. Here's, here's a simpler one. All right. Do one that's authentic. Yeah. Mike, you're on the air. Go ahead. I think Gilbert's great, man. Everybody always calls up and like, gives him stuff, but uh, I think he's great. I All right. You like him. Maybe you'll go see him at Caroline's. Yeah, I'd love to. All right. You'll be the only one. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, anyway, listen, Gilbert Gottfried, he's, he's a scream at Caroline's Comedy Club tonight. One show, 8 p.m. we got to take a quick break, and then we will... Do the news. Do the news. And even we even have a guy on the phone who got arrested for making prank calls to Gilbert. Oh, really? Uh, and it's true. Is that you know about that, Gilbert? Oh, yes. Uh, Neiman, is that you? Yes. You were arrested for making prank calls to Gilbert? Yes, I was. Yes. Where were you making these prank calls? Where did you make these calls to? Well, I, I, first it started off, we were pranking a whole bunch of people out of one of my phones. I had one of my friends, he had a phone book, he used to be a rapper, and Gilbert we used to be in his videos. Right. So what happened was I stole his phone number out of Gilbert out of my friend's book and started pranking Gilbert out of my office in the Bronx. And what happened? Well, I kept pranking him from a phone number, and I kept telling him my name was Neiman, and I had met him in uh, L.A. doing some show, and I had taken him out to a dinner, and I paid for his dinner, and he told me when I come to New York that he would reimburse me or he would take me out. Already, you know, it's so Gilbert, how did you get him locked up? Oh, well, the guy was calling me up, like, threatening, I'm going to come there and kill you. And nice. I had it on, that's a good that's phony phone call. Yeah, and I said, that's a good... <laughs> so you so, called the police? Yeah, call the cops. Wait, I can't believe you got the nerve to call yes, the cops. Yes, yes. Right. Call the cops. Good for you. They tracked it down to this, like, Pete Nice from right. uh, Third Base. You remember him? <laughs> is, that, is that you, Pete? No, no. It's, 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 he has nothing to do with this. I, I oh, told him yes, about it. yes. He says yes. he stole the number out yeah, of the Yeah, that's what yeah. he's saying now. Uh-huh. Uh, so the cops... Next thing I know, this Pete Nice calls me up. He said the cops were interviewing, asked, questioning his wife. Right. Because they tracked it to his number. Wow. And then uh, Pete Nice and this guy were both, like, blaming the other one. I see. For doing it. I see. So, they all right. started, like, to chicken out and say. So you well, really was, taught him a lesson. Well, yeah. It was right. all the other guy. But did you threaten to kick his ass? Yes. Yes, yeah, okay. Have you stopped calling, Gilbert? Yeah. Have you stopped calling, Neiman? Uh, Neiman is gone. Yeah, see, now he's... <laughs> well, you only get a certain amount of time in jail to call. Yes. <laughs> did you that prosecute? That was just one phone call. Did you prosecute? Uh, no, no, they both know. got... Uh, the cops said they were both, like, really scared. Oh, okay. Yeah. It was enough. So they yeah. didn't want to rape yeah. you or anything. <laughs> yeah. Oh. You know, Steven Spielberg had a stalker that wanted to rape him. I, I know. Yeah. I, I can't even get stalkers to rape me. <laughs> right. <laughs> we'll take a break. We'll be back right after these words. This is a special report from News Channel 4. If you're just joining us, I want to bring you up to date on an air crash off the south shore of Long Island tonight. It apparently, according to our reports, is TWA Flight 800 that departed JFK Airport for Charles de Gaulle in Paris. Uh, there were reportedly 212 passengers and 17 crew members on board. Now, the site of the crash is 10 miles off of the Atlantic Ocean south of Mauritius Bay on the south shore of Long Island. A Coast Guard C-130 rescue plane has reported life rafts and wreckage in the water. And I have Kevin Smith of the United States Coast Guard on the telephone right now. Uh, Kevin, can you tell me exactly... Exactly what's going on? Well, right now we we do have a C-31 out there checking out checking out the wreckage. There is also a problem with there are you know some fishermen and boats out there, and they you know they refuse to get away. They keep going. Hello, sir. Bubba Booey. Hello, sir. Robert Clements. Bubba Booey. Hello, sir. Hello, sir. Bubba Booey. Hello? Uh, well, let's cut this off here. Um, I apologize for that. That certainly was terribly inappropriate. And then in the middle of this tragedy, when people out there are worried about their loved ones, to make that kind of an insensitive display is uh, highly offensive, highly inappropriate. And I hope that person's friends identify him and uh, and let him know exactly what he has just done. You're listening to the always inappropriate, always insensitive Howard Stern. All right, let's find out what's in the news. We're running way late. Yesterday, I told you that Louise Woodward, the nanny who was accused of killing the eight-month-old baby she was supposed to be taking care of, was uh, allowed to leave the country. So she is back in England, and she held a press conference, Howard. Yeah, now she's back in England. That's everything she might have to say. Well, I think when you're learning to be a nanny, you have to kill at least five babies to begin with. Right, or else you wouldn't really be learning. Yeah. 
They can't expect you to get it right right away. Yeah. So here is Louise Woodward. Number 11, please. Mm -hmm. He uh, tells us that um, after being back in England, after many months here in the United States battling the legal system, she's happy to be home. I beat him with a hammer. <laughs> I, and then he looked like he was bleeding. All right, let's hear what the woman yes. has to say. All right. No one's talking about your comedy. Yes. Um, back on English soil. Um, I've really missed the place. And I'd like to thank all the people who supported me. And all the people who've given money to my trust fund that helped me with my defense. Jeez. I believe that there was a trust fund for her. I know Gilbert didn't give any. Do you ever give to charity? No. Never. No, and I bet you not one of those people would let her babysit for them. Right. Yeah, that's the, thing. That's the point. Going yeah. into child care. Yeah. Well, here she uh, tells us that uh, she is appealing to the medical community to... Prove her innocence. She's still claiming to be innocent. I'm looking for the real murderer. <laughs> <laughs> I did not kill baby Matthew. Um, and I just hope that... Uh, she didn't that the kill medical him. medical community will take up my case now that all our views are appealed closed now. Do you see? Do you see why this woman deserved to do jail time? She, she won't shut up. I didn't kill him. She was convicted, and she still says she didn't kill him. It was a white cop who's trying to convict me because I'm a poor black man. He's <laughs> 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 the racist NYPD, <laughs> and they they're trying to convict me because I'm a famous black man. <laughs> <laughs> she says she's not responsible for Matthew Epen's death, and uh, the only way to prove it is by educating people. She's in favor of uh, educating people about shaken baby syndrome. There have been some questions, Howard, about the trust fund she referred to before, whether uh, some of the funds have been mishandled. She would not comment on that, but she um, did explain what she plans to do with her life. Number 13. Future, um, I plan more to babies. shake more babies. <laughs> <laughs> I just have to think about that, too. I'd like to go... To, uh, I'd like to go to university like I was planning to do in first place. I would like to get married and have a baby of my own to shake. <laughs> uh, I'd like to kill as many babies as possible. I'd like to do possible. what any other 20-year-old would do. I'd like to get a part-time job, do a, you know, just do normal things. Yeah, she can, she can uh, watch people's kids. I'd like to twist the heads off babies. <laughs> <laughs> Pretend that they're little jaws of jam and twist their heads off. When the baby turned blue, I took an iron in and started running it over its body. But it didn't respond, so I, I shoved a spike through its head. Wow. <laughs> wow. Amazing well, the, that she is free. Uh, yes. County District yes. Attorney. Yeah, well, there was no proof that Who she did. It, prosecuted Louise. Yes. She's very happy that she's gone, and he says, I hope she's gone for good. Here's yes. Tom Riley. Tom Riley. Number five. Number five, Gilbert. Tom Riley. I'd like to see Gilbert work the cards. I'm going to become the next Spice Girl. I'm Baby Killer Spice. <laughs> in the country, convicted of, uh, of killing uh, uh, Eddie Eben, and, and certainly someone that has been convicted of a, a crime of manslaughter, uh, I would think would not be allowed back in this country. But certainly that's not my decision to make. But I certainly I would hope that they would not let her back. Right. Keep her out of the country. She's free right now, doesn't she? she yeah. Free as Gilbert. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? There's not much you can do, is there? No. There's going to be a Michael Jordan movie. Oh. Ooh. The Fox That's Network. That's really bomb. Yeah. Has, has announced that they want to do an unauthorized TV biography. He can Michael plug it on the Magic Show. <laughs> right. That'll be great. The two of them. He's not involved. Are you watching the Magic Show? Oh, it's it's the best thing. It's on the best TV. thing on TV. <laughs> Finally, someone who agrees. <laughs> all black actors start shaving those heads and working out. Right. Because they need a guy with a jump shot to play this part. Maybe Gilbert can play that part. Yes. Would have to be uh, relegated to being a parrot the rest of his life. <laughs> oh. well, no, I'm a dog in Doolittle. Oh, that's right. Dr. Doolittle. So I'm stretching out. Have you seen the movie, Dr. Doolittle, no. yet? You haven't seen your own no. performance. I think I'm on for like about three seconds. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's enough of you. Yeah. How much do you get for three seconds worth of work? Do you get a lot of money for appearing in a movie for three seconds? No. 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 What but did I they tell you? For the love of the crowd. They told you anyone could do it, and you know, yeah. we'll get someone else if we don't have you. You well, go. they say that this new Michael Jordan movie will look at uh, Jordan's early life growing up in North Carolina, his addiction to gambling, the tragic murder of his dad, as well as his basketball career. 
Will he bang any white women in this movie? I don't know how. Mm, I like to bang some white women. <laughs> Forget about the murders that happen. I just want to get me some white women. <laughs> so you'd be great in that role. Yeah. Why don't you shave your head? Yeah. He almost I'm going to be a big sports figure. I'm going to shave my head and get me a plenty of white kluger. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I live for is the white kluger. <laughs> He's got it down. A plea from Steven Spielberg has ensured a long prison sentence for a stalker who once threatened to rape the director. <laughs> Spielberg was in the Santa Monica, California Embarrassing. yesterday when Jonathan Norman was sentenced to 25 years to life under California's new stalking law. At one point, Spielberg took the stand and described the duress the case has caused him and his family, saying, I believe I would have been raped, maimed, or killed. That's embarrassing. Like, Steven Spielberg didn't do anything to deserve this, but now you look at him like he's involved in a gay thing. Oh, yes. You know, like, he looks yeah. kind of feminine. This could yeah. also happen to my wife or kids. No, think, no he, he just wanted not. Steven Spielberg. Well, he said he wanted to tie up his wife and yeah. have her watch. So right. you don't know where the kids would. What was he going to do with the kids? Imagine, like, instead of Kate Capshaw, you want to have sex with Steven Spielberg. <laughs> The guy should be locked well, up. Well, the way Spielberg dresses, he was asking for it. Exactly. Yeah. Norman was arrested last summer outside of Spielberg's home carrying a knife, handcuffs, and duct tape. Hmm. But he didn't mean anything. Guess what? He's expected to appeal. <laughs> Why not? What else has he got to do? I wasn't going to rape Steven Spielberg. I just wanted to kill his baby. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me this. Why does the jury that's going to be hearing the uh, case against the man who's accused of killing Ennis Cosby... Uh, why can they not be regular Cosby watchers? Say that again. They've decided that the people who are going to hear the Ennis Cosby case, the yes. case of the man who killed yes. him, yes. or was, is accused of killing him, they say that uh, most of the jury are people who say they seldom watch the show. So mm. apparently they did question whether they watched the show or not. Because most people who sit on the jury are retarded. Oh. <laughs> and uh, if they see a guy on TV, they're like, oh, he's so on whether TV. whether the guy's guilty or not, they right. convict him just because it's Bill Cosby? That's right. Can they watch I, I Spy? <laughs> Nobody watches yeah. that. So anyway, they say that opening arguments will begin in that trial on Monday. They have picked the jury. The jury that will hear the case was seated yesterday with the questioning being done by Superior Court Judge David Perez. You could never sit on that trial, Gilbert, because you are personal friends with Bill Cosby. Isn't That's that correct? Right. right. Two shows. Right. One rerunning in July. Did he ever say anything to you off camera? Did he ever talk to you? Or? Hey, you see, Gilbert, it's the same, and, you know, when you go on to the thing in person. Did you ever ask him about his booty call? <laughs> <laughs> Perez, the judge, has banned cameras from the trial, saying he feared the case would become a TV episode rather than a dignified court proceeding. Let me see something wrong. Was that Gilbert's Groucho impression or Bill Cosby? Yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure. I think you should eliminate that one. When I was working on the Cosby show. <laughs> Many years ago. I, I worked with Theo, who right, was yes. my black son on the show. This was 1921. Right. All right, listen to me. He'll be at Caroline's Comedy Club tonight and show at 8 p.m. And you won't do Cosby, right? <laughs> Robin, we got to take a break. We'll finish the news when we get back. Let's listen to pro athlete Mike Schmidt embarrass himself, his team, his family, and just about anyone else with an earshot. It's the beginning of a new life for us. <clears throat> Some 18 years ago, I left Dayton, Ohio with two very bad knees. dream to become a Major League Baseball player. I thank God this dream came true. Maybe he should have played baseball in a dress. You're listening to the never weepy Howard Stern. Howard Stern Show. Oh, that was fancy. I love that one. Gilbert will be at Caroline's Comedy Club tonight. One show at 8 p.m. We're doing the news, Robin. What else is there? Big debate in the news these days about Olestra, that new fat substitute that they're putting in snacks. To Are you on that, Gilbert? Oh, yes. yes. Yeah, I just shoot it. <laughs> Reduce calories and fat. So yesterday, the... Um, advisory or administration's advisory board of the FDA uh, got together and they voted as to whether uh, Olestra stay on the market and the vote was in favor of Olestra by 15 to 2. So uh, Dr. Suzette Middleton of Procter & Gamble 
She's one of their nutrition scientists. She says there is no proof that uh, Olestra causes serious health problems, and they're very happy that they got this ruling. Here's uh, hmm. Dr. Middleton. Dr. Middleton, Robin? Number nine. Number nine, Robin? That would be number nine. Number, number nine. nine. Number nine. <laughs> number nine. What all these studies show is that when people are, in, are including these snack foods into their diet, they're experiencing no digestive changes that are any different than we have um, in our diet every day. But there are some people who object. Uh, Michael Jacobson, who is the executive director of the Center for Science and the Public Interest, and a health and nutrition advocacy. Uh, this is an, a health and nutrition advocacy group. Yeah. He says that uh, there have been a lot of side effects. Some people have uh, complained that uh, they've had nausea and diarrhea and some other things, and they don't know what the long-term side effects are. They consider the FDA. Any of them blow a leaf out of their ass? No. <laughs> <laughs> they considered the FDA approval of Olestra the other day just a minor setback. They're really uh, intent on getting it off the market. Here's Dr. Jacobson. I was pleased that the committee generally agreed that the, the label notice about Olestra's effects should remain on the package. And a few members of the committee believed that it should be made put in a more prominent position uh, and include a toll-free number, as we had suggested. I bet you he lives in Detroit, that guy. You think so? Why? An accent. I'm a master of accents, as I you know, think. Gilbert. Yes. Yes. Yeah, you like the guy from Mission Impossible. No, no, the guy from Wild Wild West. He could tell where people were from? Yeah. No, oh. no, he was like... Remember, he was the master of disguise. And you were the only one who watched that show, Gilbert. Yeah. I didn't tell you. It was all these really... Bad characterizations. I mean, with this old Lestra. Has strychnine salad dressing been okayed yet? I mean, what's next? Olestra was my other brother. <laughs> Olestra Marx? Olestra because he had artificial fat in his body. Is that right? So they called him Olestra Marx. <laughs> Meanwhile, the National Institute of Health is saying I Americans... was at the National Institute of Health. <laughs> I need to watch their waistline. I was watching my waistline. <laughs> More than half of all Americans I, I, are half, overweight. Half means that it's not the entire thing. Right, or obese. half. And it's offering tips on how to fight the battle of the is, is something that you tell patient <laughs> number one is they say skip the butter skip the butter one is the number that comes before soup from, from creamy sauces right I used to have creamy sauces count your calories I said counting is what you have to do gradual one two three <laughs> Yes. And the NIH says foods marked low fat can sometimes that have more that calories. That means that Gilbert always goes a little too far. No, no ability to know when we're just it. Yeah. In some cases, so you have to check those labels. Uh, all right, so that's the Olestra controversy. A lot of the reasons why Americans are overweight, Howard: too much eating out, bigger portions, and a lack of exercise. Right. That means that they don't exercise <laughs> enough. Well, me so like it. Did you hear about this guy, David Weinlich? Yes, I did. He's from Minneapolis. <laughs> That's how I knew that. Yes. And uh, he held this sort of auction, that kind of thing, for himself. He decided he wanted to meet somebody and marry them. He was willing to uh, hold an auction himself off and meet a woman it and marry her. It wasn't like an auction, but, you know, a bunch of people got together and his friends interviewed them and, and uh, he was interviewed by their friends and then they finally wound up making a decision and he See, actually they, married they, this woman. So how many women showed up? I, can't, I think several hundred. Several hundred. Maybe Ruben. Gilbert could get married this way. Elizabeth uh, even I was could. the yeah. eventual winner. Who? And Elizabeth Runcy. Yeah. And they're going to get married. They did get married already. Oh. They got, a marry, got married that day. They got a married they there. They got married that day in a mall out in Minneapolis. Wow. And Sorry. they say that they're having a wonderful time. Like, it's so important to be married. They describe their marriage as uh, just wonderful, even though they met a few days ago. Gilbert, you they would never marry. They are very happy. And now they're making... No, I get so much action. They're uh, making uh, the unusual marriage legal. They have applied for licenses, and after a five-day waiting period, they will be married. They say they will have another ceremony for people who couldn't <laughs> attend the mall event. You will never get married. No, no, I'm a no. wild man. Yeah. No, you are used to living on your own. You don't yes. want to have You're going to be one of those guys, yeah. Gilbert, who when you're 90, you're going to hook up with some young woman. Yeah. <laughs>
I think that's the time to get married. <laughs> Just so she can take the rest of your money. Well, Groucho, when you were old, you had many young girls, right? I had a lot of young women. <laughs> See, this is when it's a woman and she's young, you refer to her as a young woman. Right. This was, and this, this girl was a very attractive girl. When you were on Saturday Night Live, why didn't they have you do Groucho? That would have been funny. <laughs> Put you in a beret. They didn't know how to use yeah. you. And dopes. It looks like Donald Trump and Marla Maples are headed back into court. The oh. news says that their lawyers are scheduled to be in court today to discuss the ex-couple's 1993 prenuptial agreement. And they you. say that Maples wants more money than she agreed to in the prenup, which is worth about two and a half million dollars. The contract calls for less money than what she'd be entitled to under the New York law, which is potentially half of what Trump earned during their three and a half year union. Three and a half years, he probably banged her 50 times. Now he's got to give her two and a half million. Well, that's a, p- a part of the prenuptial She's cute, agreement. but it's not really 50 million. Right. Yeah. It that he, Donald would be willing to give her that. She wants more. Wow. What is it? These girls sign these prenuptial agreements, and then they go into court and well, say... I don't think a prenup is fair. You know, I've been yeah. thinking about that. Go ahead. Marriage is wow. marriage. Marriage <laughs> means you share everything. <laughs> so what is this prenup? It's like... Insurance. I agree with you in a way. I think people just shouldn't get married. If they don't want to get married, if they don't want to split their finances and do all that stuff, don't get married. And it'd be a lot simpler and a lot less work for lawyers. That's right. And I'm all for that. Trump's lawyer says the prenup is set in stone. At the end of the marriage, apparently, he tried to hand Marla a check for a half million dollars, and she handed it right back. And now they're in court. Hmm. There's the uh, new X-Files movie that's coming out this weekend. Jillian Anderson was interviewed. She was asked if she really <laughs> likes playing Scully. <laughs> oh, I, I, wait, I can't wait for the answer. Hold on. 14. Watch. I mean, certainly there are times when I, I, I get tired of it. She's a nobody. I'm frustrated, and when I, 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 you know, couldn't hear myself saying any of uh, one of my pat lines again, but um, but ultimately, oh. uh, Groucho makes more sense. Little, I can't wait till the X Files are up to here and she never works again. Uh, She'll be begging to do those lines again. She'll be going to X Files conventions and begging. <laughs> those speeches. Yeah, I'm begging about those episodes. Yeah, look, please, can we bring back a special? Could you call yeah. Mr. Duchovny and ask him if we could do a special? Of being able to have her in my life for such a long period of time. Here's a scene from the X-Files movie featuring David Duchovny and Jillian. Oh. Gilbert, do you play a parrot in that? Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> no, I play a dog in uh, the new X-Files. Yeah. Have you seen anybody digging over there? We're not supposed to talk about it. All right, very good. That's a good movie. <laughs> very nice. Mulan is the uh, new Disney film. Ming Na. I would like some Mulan. <laughs> Could you give me some of that Mulan? <laughs> uh, Ming Na Wen says that Mulan is not a stereotypical Chinese woman. Oh, that's crazy. <laughs> There's been this oh. really weird misconception about Chinese. <laughs> <laughs> Submissive and very. They, it's a matriarchal society. We are the women. Would you let us hear this? Oh, I'm sorry. Right. I'll meet my mom. You know, she is the boss lady. So. All right, go back to your impression. <laughs> <laughs> I can't stand this. What'd you say, Robin? Said it sounded like she had something to say before she yeah. started to listen. Yeah. Very hard with Gilbert. And, uh... Everybody hates Gilbert. They're all calling in. Really? Yeah, they can't stand him. You hate Gilbert, Damien? Yes, get Gilbert off the air. I've been listening for 15 years. Every time that guy comes on, I want to turn him off. Right. Then why don't you already? Gilbert, right? you're annoying. It's 15 years. Yeah, Howard and Robin are funny. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Well, we're funny, Robin. Yeah. yeah, thank goodness. <laughs> you know what? Gilbert does a lot of voice over acting. You I can't believe he gets it. Yes. yes. What is voice over acting like? Ming Na Wen responds. Boogie, crazy. <laughs> Gilbert, you must be interested in this. This is your field, voice over acting. Oh, it's very crazy. <laughs> it's <laughs> not um, limiting if if you just sort of let your imagination go. Oh. Because then oh. you can do anything. You, you know, you could be on top of a mountain. <laughs> Um, you could be Is that what you do, Gilbert? Horse with arrows coming I, at you. Yes, I imagine I have arrows coming at me. <laughs> oh, thank you for coughing, lad. Oh, boy. I can't believe people were calling your house wanting to kill you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a 
scene featuring Eddie Murphy and Ming Na Wen. Get out of here. Oh, Eddie Murphy and Ming Wa Wing? <laughs> ding, ding, ding. Wing, ding? Okay. Ding, ding, ding. All right, rise and shine, sleeping beauty. Come on, hop, hop, hop. Holy mackerel. Oh, da. Hey, now, listen here, oh, Sapphire. Got breakfast for you. Mm-hmm. Look, you get porridge. And it's happy to see you. Hey, get out of there. You won't make people sick. Am I late? No time to talk. Now, remember, it's your first day of training. So listen to your teacher and no fighting. Well, I, I can do it. I can do it. Well. I can do all, <laughs> I can do all these voiceovers. What is Eddie Murphy doing? I don't know. It doesn't sound all that hard. Take your verb and watch me stop black man. <laughs> <laughs> That's what oh, these characters should sound like. crazy black man. <laughs> That's what these characters should sound like, Gilbert? <laughs> yes. Hello there. Well, uh, hello there, little uh, yellow woman. Oh, hi, crazy black man. <laughs> <laughs> what else is in the news, Robin? Anything? Uma Thurman. Mm. Mm. Is to play. Well, I like a good white woman. <laughs> is going to play Emma Peel in the new yeah, Avengers movie. I would like to peel her. That comes out in August. Right. I think this is a sacrilege, but she's doing it anyway. Here she explains to us the gist of the Avengers. What we're dealing with here is a, a very surreal... Mm. Funny, quirky um, oh, yeah. story with these two very <laughs> central characters. Frankenstein just came into the room. <laughs> you, uh, are you angry about Uma Thurman? Mm. Uh, uh, good. <laughs> you like Uma Thurman? Red. Bad. Good. Good. Water. <laughs> good. <laughs> but no, fire is good. <laughs> <laughs> Have some soup. Soup. <laughs> Good. Good. I see what he does now. <laughs> like woman. Like me. <laughs> you make friend for me. <laughs> No, I won't do it. I can't. It's too evil. <laughs> you make me make friend for me. Woman friend. <laughs> no, I must destroy the evil that I created. <laughs> Remember which one he's doing. I want pride. <laughs> I think he went from I know I think he went from the first Frankenstein yeah. into the one where Frankenstein's bride. No, Didn't but you? I think it's the yeah. Robert yes. De Niro. No, that is not De Niro. Yes. He didn't do that one? No. No, he would never do that. Yes. No. <laughs> He's not doing That's the, the original Frankenstein, and then he moved quickly. Frankenstein's bride. He Frankenstein's did the bride. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Beautiful. Yes. Well, Uma was... And then it was no, I won't do it. Frankenstein, I won't make you a bride. I must not <laughs> do I cannot continue this evil. <laughs> <laughs> Did Emma Peel or whoever she Uma is, Thurman. Uma Thurman finish? Dead. No. Good. You got the second tape. Oh, the second tape. I just yeah. mentioned she finished with that one. I hope so. Just, uh, <laughs> very thought out description of her character, Emma Peel. Okay. Emma Peel. Emma Peel is uh, smart, capable, efficient, practical, <laughs> unconscious, <laughs> handy, <laughs> no nonsense, business. Do you, when you hear a woman like this, Frankenstein, you get you you sound sensitive. You want her. <laughs> Friend. <laughs> and, and rather. Friend. What? You make me a friend. Oh, I cannot create another evil being like you. <laughs> like, why would you tell Frankenstein he's an evil being? Yes. Get the hell out of the room. Yeah. <laughs> Don't argue with him. He's, <laughs> he's a living corpse. Yeah. Don't really yeah. talk things out. That's weird. <laughs> why don't they make a Frankenstein movie where he's a parrot? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Rob. Oh, so he had Lugosi's voice, though. We learned nothing. Yes. No, I learned that she doesn't know who Emma Peel is. <laughs> I learned that uh, you can't do the news with Gilbert. <laughs> oh, I'm listening. Gilbert will be at Caroline's Comedy Club tonight, Rob, at one show at 8 p.m. And will you do your Frankenstein impression? <laughs> <laughs> and you could all set your VCRs next month for my Cosby rerun. That's right. And yeah. not only that, everyone's looking forward to seeing uh, Dr. Doolittle with you as the voice of a dog for three seconds. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Don't go to the bathroom. <laughs>
You'll miss it. Uh, also, I want to thank, uh, do I want to, oh, watch the E! Show tonight. What's hey, on? Watch the E! Show. The E! Show has on the intern beauty pageant, which you might like, Gilbert. I you, like it. Good insight. Groucher, you'll like it, too, because you get to see young girls in sexy outfits. <laughs> a sexy outfit is an outfit which is considered a sexy. Jackie Too Many Heineken Marling works as well. His two filthy joke CDs, Sergeant Pecker and the Joke Man. Are still only twelve dollars plus four dollars U.S. shipping. You've never had a CD out, have you, Gilbert? Uh, no, no. But and yet Jackie has two. I'll make one in Jackie's basement. <laughs> also on cassette, buy two get one free. Call one eight hundred three two three King. Watch after show, Jackie. Gilbert, I don't know if you were kidding before, but uh, yeah, I got yeah, some CDs. Turn down but, uh, out of time. If you want to make your own CD, I can help you. <laughs> I got my own studio. <laughs> Friday night, July 3rd, Jackie, the wildest night of the year at Rascals in West Orange, New Jersey. A guy's talking to a hook, huh? <laughs> For information and 3D animated jokes, visit jokeland.com. See, it's, a dot is like a spot. I mean, Jackie has a different uh, uh, routine than you, Gilbert. You do impressions and various things. Jackie just tells the jokes. Oh, he does a man is talking to a two-headed hooker. But you both make people laugh. That's what counts. <laughs> That's the important thing. Jackie That's does do voices. You know, when yeah. he says a black man, he does a black yeah, man. Jackie, you do some impressions, don't you? And you're... Holy you man! You sound like a parrot. <laughs> All right. Um, Robin, that's it, I guess. I hope so. I hope so, too. I'm exhausted. Put a lid on this one. i got to go to bed. Right. Yeah. And Gilbert, let's not have any small talk after the uh, <laughs> going. I'd like to avoid that. All right. We'll see you tomorrow.